Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Now, I don't know about you, but I am getting stupidly excited for the upcoming SpaceX Falcon Heavy launches. Just a little over a year ago, we witnessed the Falcon Heavy launch for the first time on its demo mission, successfully sending Elon Musk's own Tesla Roadster into space. Now, this was amazing on so many levels, and if we actually take a look at the general trends for the search term SpaceX, you can see just how much impact this launch had around the world compared to the general news about SpaceX over the last year. I mean, this was huge, really huge. I mean, you don't get to see footage like this every day, do you? So in this video, we are going to take a dive into more detail about the Falcon Heavy and the upcoming ArabSat 6A mission that is currently scheduled in early March. Now, what can we expect from this mission? Is it going to be the spectacle that the demo mission was 12 months ago? 2019 is already shaping up to be a very interesting year for SpaceX, with a bunch of very interesting launches planned, as well as plenty of general SpaceX news going on. And of course, the next huge milestone that is the launch of the Crew Dragon Demo 1 mission. If you would like to get up to speed on all of that, I've got a video telling you everything you need to know. There'll be a tile at the end of this video to jump into that. Keep in mind as well that I'm currently working on a number of other SpaceX videos, so remember to hit that subscribe button and bell to get notified of new content right now. Let's dive into the details of the first commercial launch of Falcon Heavy, that being the flight to launch the ArabSat 6A spacecraft. The ArabSat 6A satellite is a new high capacity communication satellite developed by Lockheed Martin. Now, this satellite will deliver TV, internet, and mobile phone services across the Middle East, Europe, and Africa. Now, I haven't been able to find any exact figures on the mass of the ArabSat 6A satellite, however, it is expected to be around 6 tons. Now, ArabSat 6A is actually part of the two-satellite ArabSat 6G program and is the second of Lockheed Martin's modernized LM2100 series satellites. Now these two amazing devices are in fact claimed to be the most advanced commercial communication satellites Lockheed Martin have ever built. Now this is an impressive claim here and some of the mentioned innovations include solar arrays that are 30% lighter and 50% more powerful, upgraded flight software and more efficient propulsion capabilities. Now, the second partner satellite to ArabSat 6A has actually already been launched successfully early February on Ariane Space's VA-247 flight. The rocket here is of course the Ariane 5 European Heavy Lift Launch Vehicle. Now, it is actually worth comparing this to the Falcon Heavy quickly to see how the two rockets compare. Obviously, the Falcon Heavy is mostly reusable where the Ariane 5 is expendable. The Falcon Heavy recovering all three boosters has a payload capability of around 8 metric tons to a geostationary transfer orbit compared to around 11 tons for the Ariane 5's ECA variant. Of course, the Falcon Heavy in an expendable configuration can send well over double this mass to the same orbit. There is quite a payload penalty when recovering the booster, so we need to compare apples with apples here. The main point is that both vehicles can easily send this six ton payload to the target orbit. Now, in regards to cost, the launch of the Falcon Heavy, assuming all boosters land successfully, should sit around the stated $90 million mark, whereas the Ariane 5 would sit somewhere between 165 to 220 million. So, so wait, the Falcon Heavy sits near half the cost, can deliver this payload to the same orbit, and can be reused. It really is no wonder that SpaceX are now really shaking up the space launch industry. So given that the Falcon Heavy can deliver so much more payload to a geostationary orbit, could it have been possible to launch instead just with the Falcon 9? Well, interestingly, a Falcon 9 with recovery of the booster can launch just under the required mass to a geostationary transfer orbit, which is five and a half tons compared to the necessary six tons for ArabSat 6A. If fully expended, however, a Falcon 9 can push over eight tons into the same target orbit. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the cost would be for an expendable Falcon 9, but considering the price listed on SpaceX's website is 62 million, I would think it quite close to the price tag of a Falcon Heavy that is being almost fully reused. 
Now in the end, I believe the choice to fly this mission using Falcon Heavy is due simply to a much more comfortable sized payload for the vehicle while allowing the best chance of booster recovery. The ability to then rapidly reuse these recovered boosters for the next flight here is key because Falcon Heavy is scheduled to fly again no earlier than June this year with a mission known as Space Test Program 2. Now another interesting thought here is that the US Air Force may also simply have a requirement to see further demonstrations of Falcon Heavy's reliability with another payload before their mission. Perhaps Arabsat were encouraged to ride Falcon Heavy at a discount specifically because of such a requirement. Now this is all conjecture and an interesting thought experiment, but given the tight space between these two amazing missions, we need to think about this from a number of perspectives. When it comes down to it, there may well be only a few months between this second ever Falcon Heavy flight and the third. And then mixed with all this, everything that's going on with Crew Dragon, and this is going to be an incredible few months. Now, just like we saw with the first demonstration flight, both of the side boosters will be returning to landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral. Hopefully again complete with the mind-blowing near simultaneous landings that we witnessed with the first demo flight. However, unlike the first demo mission, we are hoping to see the center core landing on the drone ship, of course I still love you, instead of smashing next to it. SpaceX was not able to recover that core booster from the Falcon Heavy demo flight. That booster was only able to relight one of the three engines necessary to land, meaning it proceeded to smash into the ocean there at over 130 meters per second, less than 100 meters from the drone ship. It was actually so close that Elon Musk afterwards stated in a press call that the accident was enough to take out two thrusters and shower the deck with shrapnel. Now, with the upcoming Falcon Heavy flight, I've read from a number of sources that the drone ship will be placed further downrange than for any other previous booster recovery mission, and that the core will be traveling at a higher velocity than any other SpaceX booster that has been aiming for a drone ship landing. This is going to be an exceptionally hot re-entry and recovery attempt for that core booster. Now, the drone ship itself is going to be placed close to 1,000 kilometers downrange. And if you are interested in the upcoming flight profile, I would urge you to go and check out the simulation at flightclub.io. Taking a look here, we can compare the flight profile of the Falcon Heavy demo flight from February 2018, and then compare it to the upcoming Arabsat 6A launch profile. Now you can see here there is a clear difference between the two. Here the core booster wiped off a great deal of velocity for a near vertical drop to the drone ship. And this is of course the failed landing we spoke of just a little earlier. Now the Arabsat 6A launch simulation here is completely different with the center core coming in on a much more ballistic trajectory. Presumably I think with an entry speed that will push the limits of the booster. Now, if we see this core booster manage to touch down on that drone ship, it is going to be amazing. And of course, while the attention and excitement will be on the booster landings, Stage 2 of the Falcon Heavy will be busy pushing the Arabsat 6A faster and faster until the vessel is traveling fast enough to enter a low Earth orbit, which is an incredible 28,000 kilometers per hour. Stage 2 will then push Arabsat 6A into an elliptical Earth orbit with an apogee of around 35,000 kilometers or 22,200 miles above sea level. This is otherwise known as a geostationary transfer orbit. Arabsat 6A will then be decoupled to allow the satellite to circularize the orbit itself into a full geostationary orbit. Now for those of you that don't know what a geostationary orbit is, it's basically a perfectly timed orbit that moves the craft around the Earth at the exact same speed as the Earth is rotating. A satellite in such an orbit appears virtually motionless in the sky. And this is perfect as we down here on Earth can point a satellite dish towards Arabsat 6A knowing that it will always be sitting at that exact point in the sky. Now this is handy for Arabsat as they, after all, are a satellite communications operator carrying over 500 television channels and 200 radio stations. These guys are a big deal reaching tens of millions of homes in more than 80 countries across the Middle East, Africa and Europe. 
With the sheer power of the three cores together, the Falcon Heavy, as stated on SpaceX's website, is the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. This thing is an absolute beast with the ability to lift into orbit nearly 64 metric tons. More than twice the payload of the next closest operational vehicle, the Delta IV Heavy, and at only one third the cost. Now, the Falcon Heavy demo flight from 2018 was not actually using the latest and greatest versions of the Falcon Core boosters that we've been seeing from SpaceX since May in 2018. This iteration of the booster is, of course, the one SpaceX has named the Block 5. Now, interestingly, the Falcon Heavy demo flight from 2018 was using earlier version blocks for the three boosters. Now, although the two side boosters here did have upgraded titanium grid fins just like we see on the Block 5s today. Now, the central core is quite different from a Falcon 9, simply because it needs to be refined to make it strong enough to physically support the huge increase in loads from the side boosters. Now, this image here is of the Falcon Heavy from the demo flight. You can see the two side boosters have the grey titanium grid fins, while the central core was fitted with the usual aluminum grid fins. Now, those titanium grid fins are super expensive to create in comparison to the aluminum. So, the fact that it was the core booster that was lost in the demo flight rather than the side boosters is actually quite lucky. SpaceX really wants to avoid losing these titanium grid fins if they can help it. So, what is different about the new Block 5 boosters that is to be used on the Arabsat 6A mission? There are actually a bunch of upgrades to this vessel, most of which make the booster core even more reusable than their predecessors. According to SpaceX, each Block 5 can fly around 10 times before requiring any major refurbishments, and as many as 100 times before the booster is retired completely. Now, although we have not seen any booster fly this many times, we have certainly seen evidence that the refurbishment cost should be much lower than with previous booster iterations. From a design point of view, the new Block 5 has a more durable interstage, that's the part here that connects the two rocket stages, the titanium grid fins as mentioned before, improved engines, retractable landing legs, and much more. Now, the Block 5 booster has been largely locked down to allow it to be crew rated for the upcoming Crew Dragon missions. And this is because any change to the boosters could introduce unnecessary risk to NASA's astronauts. So it's now time for SpaceX to stop playing around so much with the design iterations for the booster cores and instead move on to new, more exciting tasks such as the new Starship. It is certainly no secret that this Falcon Heavy flight has been delayed several times now. That being said, we do seem very close to a final date being locked in, with the launch currently placed with a net date in March. Now, at this point in time, I'm a little skeptical about this date. In essence, Falcon Heavy's second flight will need to wait until the dust settles from Crew Dragon's first launch before SpaceX can begin connecting the Falcon Heavy cores and verifying the vessel is all ready to go. Keep in mind, of course, that this is only the second time SpaceX will be organizing a Falcon Heavy flight like this, so they will just need some time and patience to ensure everything is arranged. Crew Dragon's uncrewed demonstration mission is currently scheduled just before this video is scheduled to go live, so it is a super exciting day already. Both missions are exciting milestones that SpaceX will want to complete flawlessly, and with that in mind, I'm not going to be overly surprised if we see the Falcon Heavy launch date slip back again slightly. We'll soon find out. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're new to my channel, you may be interested in my Crew Dragon video from the other week. This is going to be launched very, very soon. If you're interested in simulations of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, I've made a bunch here on the channel, so check those out. We also have a growing group of SpaceX enthusiasts on my Discord channel. There is a link in the description, so if you love these topics as much as we do, please do get in touch. If you have any questions for me about this video, or for me in general, please do shoot them down to me in the comments below. 
if the video has earned your subscription, a huge welcome to the channel. And for all my existing subscribers, a massive thank you for all your awesome support. I could not do this without you guys. Also, a huge thank you to my very dedicated quality control squad listed here. They donate their time to me simply to help research these topics and verify everything is presented well. So if you would like to be involved, again, pop into Discord and let's chat. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have everything you need to know about the upcoming SpaceX Crew Dragon mission. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.